River deltas are very interesting. Basically, a river will get sediment from downstream, and that sediment will keep flowing until it reaches the not flowing area where it will be deposited down. And it being deposited actually causes the river to split when it meets the non flowing body of water. It is very uncommon for a river like this to split, other than in the case of deltas. And these rivers can keep depositing and depositing sediment here until they become massive. And so today we are going to be investigating some massive Arctic river deltas and how they came to be. So the first river delta we are going to be looking at is the Mackenzie River Delta. And the Mackenzie River is actually the longest river in Canada, coming in at 1,080 miles long. And once you see the river delta on the map, it is very noticeable. So here is the river delta in question. It is also sometimes called the Beaufort Delta because this is the Beaufort Sea up here, which it flows into, but more commonly it's the Mackenzie River Delta. And so this delta is around 130 miles long from this point here called Point Separation all the way to where it feeds into the Arctic Ocean up here. This makes it the second largest Arctic Delta in the world, and we will get to the number one in this video. So if we zoom in here, you can see just how connected and how many branches there are of this river. At so many points, the rivers wrap around and form these inner islands. And couple this with the ancient Arctic landscape of Canada, and you get these many branching paths with these islands which have many lakes and all more branching paths. So how is this river delta formed? Well, a lot of the sediment actually comes from this river, the Peel River here. It gets all the sediment from the many tributaries that come from the Mackenzie range of the Rocky Mountains over here, which tears through the landscape as we can see here, and this is what travels all the way downstream to deposit here. And so what if you want to visit this river delta? Well, there are actually a few towns around here. So we have Fort McPherson, Sekachek, Aklavik, and Anuvik. So Anuvik is the most accessible town here, it has the largest airport out of any of these, and it would only cost $1,815 with three stops if you were departing from New York. Now, another thing I find interesting about this river delta is this, the Kendall Bird Sanctuary. And this remote bird sanctuary on Kendall Island actually supports over 60,000 migratory birds all the way in the north of Canada. And so that is all we are going to be looking at for the Mackenzie River Delta. Now, this isn't technically in the Arctic, but it is still very interesting. This is the Peace Athabasca Delta, and it is the largest inland river delta in the world. So this is where the Peace River and the Athabasca River converge into Lake Athabasca and eventually form the Slave River, which is actually part of the headwaters of the Mackenzie River because it flows into the Great Slave Lake. And the total area that this place makes up is about 1,200 square miles. And part of this delta is actually part of Wood Buffalo National Park, which is the largest national park in Canada. And also, this delta has been designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1983. And so, looking at it here on a map, it doesn't look as vast as the Mackenzie River Delta, but it is still just so cool to look at. I mean, we have Lake Clare here, and in this Lake Clare, it has many close lakes to it, and the, these rivers that are flowing between them. And it is crazy to think that this is over 500 miles from the nearest ocean. And again, this place is pretty remote. You can find a Fort Chippewyan, but that is about the only airport. And so this has been the Peace and Athabasca River Delta. But now, let's take a look at the yukon Kuskokwim River Delta. So this river is formed by the Yukon River and also the Kuskokwim River. And something I find really interesting about this river delta is that these two rivers never have a direct confluence. The Kuskokwim River starts here in the Alaska Range, and the Yukon River has a source all the way at Atlin Lake in British Columbia. And so even though these rivers don't directly cross each other, they make together a massive river delta where no doubt they connect somewhere. And this river delta is around 50,000 square miles. And another thing that's interesting about this river delta is that it has the Yukon Delta National Wildlife Refuge. This encapsulates a huge portion of this river delta, and it comes out to be 19 million acres, making it the second largest national wildlife refuge in the U.S. Now, the largest town in this delta is Bethel, 
which you might have heard of. It's actually the eighth largest city in Alaska. And this actually has a pretty sizable airport, but the flights here are still pretty expensive. And I encourage you all to look at all of these river deltas for yourself on Google Maps and just zoom in and just see how much water is here. Just imagine if you're placed here and you're told you have to get out. Where do you even try and go? But now let's move on to the largest Arctic river delta in the world. This is the Lena River Delta in Russia. Now, some fun facts about this river. This river is 2,600 miles long, which makes it the 11th largest river in the world and the largest river entirely within Russia. Now, up here, it drains into the Arctic Ocean, where you can see it splits into so many sections. If we were to measure the distance between the two sections, it comes out to be around 170 miles. And this entire delta has an area of about 12,000 square miles, making it one of the largest in the world. And it's almost like this is a fractal. I mean, you just keep zooming in, you just keep seeing more and more streams, tiny streams that connect everything. And it's just so crazy to look at this entire network that is all connected or all nearly connected. And most of this river delta is protected by the Lena Delta Preserve, or this Russian name. And looking at pictures of this place, it's just crazy what this river has carved into this landscape. And it looks like the only way to get here is this 12-day cruise from Yakutsk. And so this is what the trip looks like. It actually looks really cool. And so if you really want to see places on the Lena River, this is the cruise to go on. And so this has been a look at just a few of the largest Arctic River deltas. If you have anything else you want me to make a video on that you find interesting, comment below.